Hello everyone. Today I am going to speak on the topic intraoral examination. This presentation is guided by Dr. Bhushan sir. In this presentation we shall see about importance of intraoral examination, how to examine the structures intraorally and what all structures are to be examined. Intraoral examination is an important part of the case history. It plays judicial role in diagnosis and treatment planning. It is done right after the extraoral examination. By gathering all the information right from demographic details till intraoral examination, a tentative provisional diagnosis can be drawn out. Instruments used in intraoral examination are plain surface mouth mirror, probe, shepherd who explorer, and tweezers. Importance of intraoral examination It helps in early diagnosis of any pathology. It helps in determining the possible treatment modification. It also helps in determining the patient's attitude to the dental treatment. It helps in determining any need for medical consultation or if any additional diagnostic procedures are needed. And it is also used to keep as a record with other necessary information in the case history. Intraoral examination is divided into two components that is hard tissue examination and soft tissue examination. In this following points are seen for teeth that is number, its size and shape, its color, if any root stem, supernumerate or impacted teeth seen, the extent of dental caries, any missing teeth present or the occlusion which is classified using Angus Muller classification, if the occlusion plane is parallel to the pupillary line, if any vesting diseases like attrition, abrasion, erosion or abfraction seen, if any tooth is mobile which is classified using Miller's classification, if any restored or faulty restoration is seen, if any drifting or pathological migration is present. We also look for teeth deposits like plaque, calculus and stains or if any hypersensitivity is seen. These are the pictorial representation of wasting diseases. Now let's look for soft tissue examination. In this, first we see its tongue. For tongue, we usually see its size, shape, color, volume of tongue, integrity of papilla, any cracks or fissures seen or if any ulcers or swelling present. This is the pictorial representation of few anomalies of the tongue. Then for in gingiva, we look for its color, contour, its shape and size, its consistency, if stippling is present or absent, if bleeding or present probing is seen or not seen any ulceration or abnormal growth is present. For periodontal health, we are concerned with periodontal pockets, recession, total loss of attachment seen. In palate and phosphorus, we look for palates, color, shape, any deviation or swelling or ulcer seen in the palatal throat form. In oropharynx, the following structures are seen, that is palatini and pharyngeal tonsils, posterior pharyngeal wall, uvula, anterior and posterior pillars. In this, we look for any enlargement or deviation of uvula or swellings. In tonsils, enlargement, infection and tonsillolids are seen. For floor of mouth, any swelling or ulcer is noted. If any dilation, inflammation or silolith is present in the ductal opening, we also look for quality and quantity of saliva. And in cases of edentulous ridge, we thoroughly examine for the form of the ridge, any soft tissue abnormality seen or any bony abnormalities like tori, bony protuberance is seen. We also look for presence of any remnant root pieces. Now let's see what is Malampatti classification. This classification has been used to identify the patients at risk for the difficult tracheal intubation. Thus, classification provides a score between 1 to 4 based on the anatomic features of the airway seen when the patient opens his or her mouth and protrudes the tongue. As we can see in this picture, class 1 shows complete visualization of the soft palate. In class 2, we can see the complete visualization of uvula. In class 3, visualization of only the base of uvula. And in class 4, soft palate is not visible at all. So, how is this test performed? This test is performed while the patient is in sitting position and then he or she is asked to open their mouth and stick out their tongue. So how do we examine these structures? We examine them by either inspection or palpation. 
when the patient opens his mouth the first thing clinician notices is his oral hygiene for example a fetid odor is indicative of a poor oral hygiene or an infective process present in the oral hygiene second the mucosa is inspected for its color texture presence of ulceration or any draining sinuses as discussed earlier in palpation intraoral palpation is similar to that of extraoral palpation for example an extra or intraosseous swelling is palpated to record the consistency and extent of the swelling further the palpation will reveal whether the swelling is sessile or pedunculated and any breach in the buccal or lingual cortical plates is seen then in traumatic patient the palpation begins in the anterior maxillary region and proceeds behind the zygomatic buttress to the tuberosity region the anterior border of the ramus is then palpated coming downward to the vestibule and to the anterior mandibular region any signs for tenderness or abnormalities are recorded in this way it is palpated so to conclude once the clinical examination is complete the clinician has a general idea regarding location extent and clinical nature of the lesion due to which a tentative diagnosis is established in clinician's mind thank you